welcome to my sewing room. A lot of times people say to me, Martha, I really would like some heirloom sewing for me. Some really tailored, beautiful things that really, really are heirloom sewing, but I want it to be on adult clothes. Well, today is your day. Patty Smith has created some of the most wonderful bows, bows that are really wonderfully heirloom and yet wonderfully tailored. This bow is on a very tailored and very simple blouse. The bow is made out of handkerchiefs, absolutely elegant and very easy to wear. You want some tailored beautiful clothes? Well, once again, Patty Smith's bow is on the front of this really good looking chambray or, or denim fabric and then it has absolutely wonderful machine stitching down the sleeves and on the bottom of the little peplum and here is the skirt that goes with this peplum now I'm going these are really this isn't a skirt it's culottes let me go down here to the bottom and show you this precious little bow made out of a handkerchief that is on the bottom of these very tailored culottes Patty Smith's bow skirt has been one of the most favorite skirts of everybody. It's a good looking straight skirt. Now let me turn it, hold it down here where you can see the bow. This is the cutest bow that is on the bottom of this bow skirt with its little pleats, absolutely adorable, fun to wear, and yet very tailored. Once again, another variation of this really good looking straight skirt with a bow at the bottom a kick pleat with little pleats underneath, this time trimmed in grow grain ribbon. Come over to the technique boards with me and we'll begin to share with you how easy and fun it is to use tailored bows on your clothing. It is so quick and easy to use your beautiful handkerchiefs, maybe even some of your antique handkerchiefs, to make a beautiful bow to go on the front of a blouse for you. Here we go. This is a lovely handkerchief made out of linen. The critical factor on the handkerchief to make one of these bows is that there is embroidery or some kind of motif on all four corners. All right, first of all, you're going to stitch a little triangle on this side after folding it up. Stitch one more triangle on this side. After those triangles are stitched, here it is with one straight stitch, they're all cut out. Let me show you what it looks like when you open it up. See, you have a little piece that looks like that. Now you will also have two little pieces that look like that. Put those two little pieces together. Let me unpin it. You see those two little pieces? All right, pull them over and stitch right in the middle and there is your bow shape. Here are the four corners of your handkerchief. One, two, three, four, and, but they look totally different now, don't they? The next step is to cut a piece of the linen left over from the other part of the handkerchief to fold it and stitch it making a bow tie. Then wrap that piece of linen around the center of this the, the bow that you have just made. And there is your beautiful bow all ready to go on the front of your blouse. Now if you would like ties on your bow, which Patty has used on a lot of her blouses, this is a fun little trick right here. Fold up your handkerchief. You'll need another handkerchief for this. Fold your handkerchief up because the little tie is going to be about this width and make a stitching line right along here. Now why did you fold that handkerchief up? You need this finished edge of the handkerchief to be on the other side. Stitch a line right here for a bow tie and then do the same thing over here. Stitch a line and cut it away and there is your bow tie piece. See here are your two bow tie pieces there. All right, to make the bow skirt, which Patty's going to show you in just a minute, first of all, you fold up a square like so and stitch it. Then to make the bow that goes on the skirt, you simply pleat it up, pleat it up until it makes a bow, kind of pinch it in the middle and pull it out. Make a bow tie and here is your bow for the skirt. Then you're going to come down, if you look at this piece, make a little square here a little catty cornered stitching. It looks like this. Turn it right side out and you have your little bow ties for the bottom, uh, bottom of the bow on the skirt. The pleated back is really interesting and cute also. You have your pleats right here all folded in. I fold the, stitch the whole back of the skirt up. Here's my back skirt with the seam allowance. Then let me remove this piece to show you what happens next. Bring this piece over, turn it face down, 
and stitch all the way around and that way you have your, um, your pleats in the back of your skirt. Come along with me over to the sewing machine and let's just see exactly how these wonderful bows and this beautiful bow skirt is created. I have as my guest today Patty Smith, the one who wrote the original book on both of these techniques. Welcome to the show, Patty. Thank you, Martha. It's nice to be here. We're going to start today by doing the handkerchief bow. We will start with the handkerchief itself folded in half. I've marked a little point here at five inches down from the long edge, another at three inches from the, on the short edge. I have joined them with a straight edge. I'm going to stitch on that line to begin with making our bow. And that's just a straight stitch. Just a straight stitch. Mm -hmm. That's easy enough. All right, we would stitch both sides uh, of the handkerchief, and then we would cut away. When we did that, it would look like this. These are the edges that have been stitched and cut away. I have uh, finished this with a zigzag or a surged edge, which, whichever you would prefer. And we'll get our two corners of our handkerchief together to make our bow. They're both laid out. Then we will put right sides together and stitch them one inch, one inch from the edge. just with a straight stitch. And the excess can be cut away, giving you your bow as we would lay it out. To make the tie knot, you would have just a rectangle piece that you would fold over, stitch along the long edge, This would be turned, making a finished knot edge. This would then be placed around the bow as you have it. You want to scrunch your bow just a little bit, bringing these to the back edge, and then stitching. The, the, the knot may vary in thickness depending upon the design that is on the handkerchief itself. Because some will have a stiffer fabric where others will be softer and, and you won't need quite as large a bow, uh, bow knot. Then trim off the excess that you have there and then you have your bow with a little bit of fullness in it because you want a little texture when you put it on your uh, uh, Blouse. You know, Patty, let me hold up now for the camera to see and for our viewers at home to see exactly what this blouse looks like when it is finished. Um, the bow is ready to go on the blouse there. Mm -hmm. To make our streamers, we would take our second handkerchief that we have here and we have folded it. This is approximately two inches uh, because we want to use both of the folded, uh, the finished edges here so that we have a finished tie and use the finished edges all the way around. I will stitch down, I've made a little uh, dot up here at about six inches, and I'm stitching just on the inside of the finished edge here because I want it so that it will turn out and I will have the finished edge. You will stitch both of these sides here this one would then be stitched six inches from the edge. And I have uh, another board here where we will show you what this would look like as we cut this away. This was the seam that I just did. And we would cut it away, both having both ties here. And then when you fold it out, you have your finished edge all the way around. The ties would then be fold it at the top to be put up under the bow. Okay, now I'll hold it up once again and we'll look at those ties that hang down. So you kind of scrunch it up a little bit, mm -hmm. don't you, Patty? And then just zigzag that then down? We're ready to zigzag around. Sounds pretty easy to me. Uh -huh. And you can <laughs> cut out from behind if you would like. Okay. 
Then now then, you ready to go to the bow skirt? Yes, which yes. everybody in the world just loves Patty Smith's bow skirts better than anything. Okay. <laughs> going to start with the bow itself. It's just a rectangle piece of fabric which we folded over with this in the center. I've finished the edge uh, so that it would wash well. We're going to stitch just down the edge on both of these edges. You would stitch this side and you would stitch your other side right down through here. Same, just a straight stitch. Then you would be ready to fold, turn it right side out. So, like a little pocket in there. Uh-huh, just a little pocket. And that uh, will give you your finished bow. Before I fold it up, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do the knot because we need the little uh, bow knot on there. You would just take a, another rectangle or square piece of fabric, stitch it, Once it's stitched, turn it so that you have your little knot. The handkerchief is then just folded. I mean, the bow is then just folded, up, scrunched up so that you get a nice little bow. Put your knot around it. Here again, the, the knot itself may vary because of the thickness of the fabric itself. Place it under the machine, stitch it, and you can cut off the excess that is left on the uh, tie the knot. Bow? And you can just play with it, you know, as you put it on your skirt and begin to finish it. All right, the tie uh, streamers on the bow are made by coming down six inches and then going across. And down approximately six inches. If you have a real thick fabric, you may want to do um, one little stitch to make your corner turn easier, and then just angle it over to the edge. Then you this make two of those, I mm -hmm, guess. Two of these. Then you will just trim this off, of course, and turn it, and you will have your two little streamers, which are then, again, folded up at the top to give a little texture, and the bow, will, they will be placed up under the bow itself. So cute. <laughs> the pleat in the skirt is made by taking a large square of fabric and pleating it up. Uh, you can use a pattern for your pleats, or you can just freely pleat them uh, to make them fit the uh, skirt seam that uh, you are going to put them in. Then the skirt, the pleat is put on the back seam of the skirt. Then you will stitch it in. You will need to use just the seam itself as you begin to stabilize the pleat in there. You would have the seam folded out like this. Then you will stitch down and across like this. If you oh, want you to know, show Patty, I'm how just it hold looks this up as to show, it is in there. Audience how it looks in there. You stitch it down and then those wonderful pleats are mm -hmm. just caught in there. This is the cutest little skirt you've ever seen. And Patty, thank you so much for being here today to teach us the magic of your bow skirt. Thank you. Next, we have a really wonderful bow on our quilt square. <music> Using a beautiful netting handkerchief for my collection of antiques, I have a pretty quilt square for you. Here is the bow stitched and made into a little triangle, two of them put together with a little linen bow tie on this wonderful traditional quilting cotton fabric quilt. Okay, here is my quilt square and here is my handkerchief that's been folded. It's stitched and trimmed. I've got one piece right here to show you. Let me move this out of the way. One side of my bow to show you and over here we have the other side of the bow and all I need now is a bow tie. So I folded the bow tie 
I'll fold it under both ways, put the bow tie right there, and there is a beautiful bow for my quilt, well, jumped off, didn't it? Anyway, there's the beautiful bow for my quilt square. Next, my little doll has a really beautiful new dress, and she would like to share it with you. Using ecru netting, beautiful ecru laces, and a little pretty ecru lining, my little doll is ready to say hello. She has the sweetest little, do you see the little high yoke dress that we've been using in this series? Do you notice there's a little bit of, tiny little bit of beading in there? I'm going to kind of put my little stick underneath there so you can see. The little silk ribbon has been run through the beading and pretty little bows are tied that come down the dress. Now the feature I want to show you most of all on this dress is the little sleeve. This has little angel wings is what I call this little piece that comes on top of the sleeve. See that little, it's kind of like little pinafore sleeve, but I call it angel wings. I think that makes the sweetest little sleeve. Let me turn her around sideways so you can see a little bit about what that little sleeve looks like from the side. Then traveling on down the dress, really simple until you get to the bottom, and there is a beautifully elegant fancy band on the bottom with insertion, beading with silk ribbon run through it, and edging. Now, I would like to share with you how easy it is to put one of those little angel wings not only on a doll dress, but also on a dress for your real little live angel daughter or granddaughter. This angel wing, I sh I'm going to show you the finished version right here. This is the little sleeve with the angel wing on it, ready to go into the dress. Now, the angel wing is simply a piece of, in this case, netting, but it's a, really another sleeve cap that is cut and a little bit of lace put on it. And you see, then you just sew it down and then go ahead and construct your sleeve in the usual manner. Now, this little sleeve on the bottom has entredeau and uh, lace edging gathered, making it just a beautiful finish, all ready to gather up with a little angel wing. Now, to, to line this dress, you simply use two layers. One is the netting and one is the lining because all of the other treatments will hide those raw edges. More easy, easy, simple sewing on the skirt of this little dress. You simply make the netting layer and then make the lining layer and put all the layers at the bottom of the skirt. And that really makes a very simple doll dress, very easy to make. There were no advanced techniques at all on this doll dress. Very, very easy to make. Now then, I have a really pretty craft for you. This craft is truly one of my favorites. One of the reasons is because I have them all over my house using around picture frames. This particular bow, I know you've seen them in all the decorator shops, very expensive I might add. You can order them out of all the really fancy mail order places. It's made out of water stained taffeta and I use mine two ways. The one like this with two ties, I put it at the top of the picture and then uh, bring it around the edge of the picture frame. And I also have another version here that just has one tie that comes down and this one I use to put little miniature pictures like one here, one here, one here. Very, very Victorian, and I just love mine. By the way, my house is done in a lot of these, these mauve colors, and I have several of these in my house. They're very easy to make. Let me share with you how, and next time you want one of these for your home, you won't have to spend $30, $40, or $50. First of all, I start out with, for the double one, I start out with a, piece of, a pretty piece of printed damask, and then I have my water stained taffeta. These are stitched and folded double, then I'm going to just kind of smush them up here and a little bit of a pleat. Then I have my long tie that's lined, just two strips together sewn all the way around. I put it on the very back like this and I wrap my bow tie around both of them and stitch it. And then I have one of these beautiful uh, ties to go around my picture frame and then of course on the very back I'm going to have to put a little ring to hang it with so I'm going to turn it over after all of this is stitched and put a little ring back here so I can hang it on my wall. Now that is an easy and a fun craft. Next I have for you a lovely pillow. As a matter of fact it's one of my favorite pillows also. The first time I taught this pillow was down in Australia and the ladies loved it so much I thought I would certainly bring it in for the TV show. 
Here is one of my favorite pillows in the whole world. And of course, since this is the bow show, I have some little bows on the netting that is imported from England. This is uh, English netting and these are French laces around it. This is kind of a cut and paste pillow. You see, all of this is put on a big square of baby blue silk dupioni. The laces are, are sort of smooshed and pulled together and then other laces put around the edge. Let me make this a little bit more clear. Here's my pillow I'm working on. This is just a square of blue silk dupioni. Of course, you can use any color you want to, and you can shape the laces any way you want to. I actually work on the laces uh, on, on a fabric board. I'm sticking the pins in here, and I put it any way I choose to put them and pull them and push them and just make it really beautiful. Now, let me show you this. My favorite thing is what goes around the edge. This is a tube. I, I folded one piece of fabric, stitched it, and turned it right side out. So I have a long tube I'm going to work with. Now, this pretty border around here is called pull and smush. I'm going to simply smush up some little cabbage roses on the corner. Then I kind of pull it over a little bit, pull it out, and do a little hand tacking. Then I'm going to go a little further down here and I'm going to kind of smush it up and maybe even twist it along the edge. And then when I come over to this corner, it'll be one more time for one more cabbage rose. So I'll kind of smush one around there. And I mean literally, you just smush it. And then we'll pull it on around and my, my pieces around the edge have to be long enough to go all the way around. And then after I have done my pulling and smooshing and made this just absolutely wonderful, putting a little uh, cabbage rose on each end just by twisting it around and stitching it all by hand. I tack it all by hand as I do my little smushes and make them look pretty. I tack it and then I go ahead and finish the pillow. I would like for you to come along to my attic. I have a beautiful antique to share with you. I almost called this antique blouse a scrapbook blouse, and I'll tell you why. This is the most wonderful collection of just a little bit of everything known to humanity, all stitched onto this one blouse. There's several different kinds of laces. You can see the different laces, and these are wonderful motifs which have been stitched on, on top of other pieces of lace. The blouse has tucks down the front, laces that are mitered, it has release tucks on it. And you know the lovely thing about these turn of the century blouses, the backs are truly just as pretty as the front. You can even see I have some stains on this one that didn't come out, but I think the stains are beautiful also. Absolutely an incredible, an incredible, uh, be incredibly beautiful blouse. And you know where I like to use these blouses in today's uh, modern clothing? To put one of these antique blouses or a reproduction on underneath a wonderful business suit. Absolutely gorgeous, even with the high collar. Enjoy making these antique reproductions. I have a letter here today from Dorothy Stewart, who is president of the Saga chapter of the Shenandoah Smockers. Our guild felt that it wanted or needed to do something to help those less fortunate. This project was chosen because we hoped that producing something beautiful for a very ill patient might benefit both the family and the patient. And the project they chose was to do gowns for hospice patients. Each member planned to make two gowns. Obviously, the area to concentrate on, she writes in her directions that go out to the Smocking Arts Guild members, the area to concentrate on is the front top and the sleeves, which will be seen above the bed coverings. The design of the rest of the gown is to assure the comfort and ease of the patient and to assure the convenience of the caregiver. Our hope is that these gowns will bring a bit of sunshine and cheerfulness to the patient and family when cheer is at a minimum. Dorothy, that sounds like a wonderful idea, and I'm sure one that some other people might give consideration to, making gowns for hospice patients. Thank you so much for joining me in my sewing room today, and I'd like to invite you to join me next time. Mm -hmm.